And our first main topic today gets submitted to us by Dennis Edison, who writes, Hey, John and Rob, I know you talked last week about James Cameron and Tim Miller had a rocky time making the new Terminator movie, but I wanted to know if you saw what Miller has now publicly said, that he'll never work with James Cameron again. This is the second significant bridge that he has burned after departing Deadpool franchise because Ryan Reynolds wouldn't give him uh, total control. What do you make of all this? All right, thanks a lot for sending that in, Edison, and, or uh, Dennis, I should say. And yes, Tim Miller, who did such a great job with the first Deadpool movie, but it's come out in interviews in recent weeks that ultimately the reason he left was that Ryan Reynolds wouldn't give him total control of the film. Okay, so now he's left. We heard from James Cameron last week that he that Cameron and Tim Miller battled a lot over Terminator. And Cameron said, but you know, that's the creative process. You know, there's blood on the walls, but that's the creative process. Well, now Tim Miller has been asked if he'd ever worked with Cameron again. And uh, this is what Tim Miller said. He said, I can say no. Uh, but it has nothing to do with whatever trauma trauma a uh, trauma i have from the experience it's more that i j it's more that i just don't want to be in a situation again where i don't have the control to do what i think is right i just got an email uh last week from jim who said i know we clashed a little bit i put it all down to two strong creative people with differences of opinion and i think it made the movie better i'll be back in la in december let's go get a beer uh, and that was james cameron writing to tim miller which by the way side note Kudos to James Cameron. That's that's a nice thing. To, look, when you look, Rob, you and I have talked about this. That when you're making something creative, it can be there can be clashing. I mean, if you, if you got creative visions of people who care for a project and you're clashing, blah blah blah. I, I'll just say this is a side note. Kudos to to James Cameron for writing to Tim Miller and saying, "Hey, we we're just two creative people. We had playing. Let's go out and get a beer together." Kudos to you. I think that's nice. And kudos to Tim Miller for sharing that story. I think that's good, too. But, Rob, it does raise an interesting question here. That this is now two high-profile projects that Tim Miller is basically saying, I didn't have enough control, so I left Deadpool. I didn't have enough control, so I'm not going to work with James Cameron again. Is this a situation, do you think, that... Well, the common denominator between both situations is Tim Miller. Or do you think this is just a situation where he happened to be, by coincidence, in two very unique circumstances? Deadpool, which took a lot of years and a lot of effort on Ryan Reynolds' part to get that thing to the point that Fox was going to green light it and therefore he was going to have a bunch of control. And then just by circumstance, you happen to roll into a Terminator film where it was really made an icon by James Cameron, who was there as a producer. So do you think this is a Tim Miller issue? Do you think this is a Ryan Reynolds, Jim Cameron issue, James Cameron issue? Or do you think this is just an issue of, hey, just by fluke of circumstances, he rolled, rolled from one very unique situation in Deadpool to another very unique situation, Terminator. How do you see it? Look, <laughs> you know, when you get two directors together, on the same project. I know Cameron's a producer on this, but it's still, he's had to watch his baby, the franchise he created over the course of the last two decades, be be used and turned into something by very different people, whether it was the TV show, the Sarah Connor Chronicles, whether it was Terminator 3, Terminator Salvation, Terminator Genesis. So James Cameron comes back to work on the Terminator franchise. Having two directors on a project is going to be difficult. And when you have the 98-pound gorilla, or what is it? What is the term? 100-pound gorilla? 100-pound gorilla. Or the elephant in the room? James Cameron's the elephant in the room. Like, he's <laughs> the kind of guy. And Tim Miller, look, he, 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 didn't, he made Deadpool 1. It was a big success. He left Deadpool 2, remember, because he didn't want to, apparently didn't want to work with Ryan Reynolds. And again, Ryan Reynolds is the person that carried Deadpool along and made it happen, really. Yeah. So Tim Miller has not been in a situation where he's been allowed complete creative freedom and to do his own project. And he's a very creative guy. You weren't at the Paramount presentation at CinemaCon. Yeah, I missed that one. But I was ill. I know you weren't feeling well. Um, but Tim Miller came out and was jumping up and down like a little kid. He was so excited about Dark Fate. And they hadn't called it Dark Fate yet. It was just called something else. I don't <laughs> think they'd named it Dark Fate by then. And he was very excited, kid in a candy store. So between then, between April and now the release, a lot of time to work on a film. So I'm sure that's when the blood was on the wall. 
But I don't blame Tim Miller for not wanting to be in a situation where as a director, he is no longer beholden to others because what then happens is he can't finish doing his job. And I think that's been frustrating for him on both of these occasions. And uh, I, I don't know what a Tim Miller only t- Terminator movie would have looked like. It might have looked different. And in Tim Miller's mind, he probably thinks it might have been better. And who knows, maybe it would have been. But you got to... You got to admit, though, there, in, with very few exceptions, with very few exceptions, no director has 100 percent control of their film. No. The people who pay for the movie and who pay the director's salary, they ultimately have final say. Again, with a few exceptions. There are a few exceptions out there. You, you know, if your last name is Spielberg or Nolan, you probably have a little But For the most part, that's the creative experience. And don't you just need to find a way to work within that? Well, I think you do. But with another director, and especially one of the most successful directors of all time, yeah, you're you know you're suddenly put into a position where do you think the money? See, I agree. Making movies is a collective experience. It's it's a collaborative medium from the get go. But at the end of the day, a director does carry a lot of power. I mean, if, even if you don't have final cut, people defer to the director most of the time. But when you have James Cameron, who are they going to defer to? You know, and here's Tim Miller, the guy who's out there on the front lines making this movie. And even James Cameron said, I think he showed up to set once or twice. So Tim Miller was the director of record who made this movie. But then who do you think was conferring with with David Ellison and Paramount Brass and Skydance and Jim Giannopoulos, who runs the studio? It's not like he doesn't already have a long standing relationship with Jim Cameron. So Tim Miller was probably sidelined and felt a little maybe betrayed and I don't necessarily blame him but you know when they brought James Cameron on to consult that's kind of you kind of had to expect that that was what was going to happen and, and he is a producer of record on on the movie by the way yeah hey, well anyway guys I thought this would be an interesting thing to make the topic of today's question of the day because I wanted to put it to you guys and see what you thought about it because I, I believe there's a lot of a lot of dynamics at play here I think I think I don't think this is a simple question but we relegated down to a simple Twitter poll. <laughs> but, uh, but really, I think there's a lot more nuance to it here. But I simply ask you guys, with the John Campus Show question of the day, Tim Miller has now departed two franchises in a row over feeling like he wasn't given enough control. Deadpool and now Terminator. Is the problem Ryan Reynolds and James Cameron or Miller himself? Uh, I put this up just before we started the show today. Right now, almost 2,000 of you have already voted. And right now, 77% of you are saying it's Tim Miller. He's the common denominator. 23% of you are saying, hey, listen, cut the dude some slack. Like, there's a lot of creative control being exerted over him by Miller and uh, by uh, Cameron and Reynolds. And so 23% of you are saying that. And it's probably a situation, a lot, a lot of things in life, Rob, where the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. Yes, as Robert Evans would constantly say. Somewhere in the middle. So question is for you guys. What do you think about all that? Where do you think the responsibilities lie? Do you think it was just an unfortunate, you know, sequence of circumstances for Tim Miller? Jump down to the comments section below and let me know your thoughts.